Hello. Now you get to hear what I sound like. I have a California accent. We here in California do have an accent. And we drag our O's. What I'm doing is an uh, experiment. Uh, I'm trying to see how I sound doing a books on tapes type of thing. So I'm going to read a portion from my uh, manuscript, Junior Bums. And this is chapter 4, titled Four Seasons of Hell, 1968. If you know anything about a American history, you know 1968 was a bad year. So here we go. One, two, three. So how did this juvenile delinquency start it? In the school library, I would do research for my history class. I came across this biography of Adolf Hitler. I checked it out and read it cover to cover. I detested the genocide he perpetrated on the world. However, what fascinated me about him was his, this social misfit climbed to the top command of a world dictator. I forget the title of the book, but it was saying it stayed in my young mind that somebody could become a big somebody, that some nobody can become a somebody. Oh, I could have read about Howard Hughes or even Albert Einstein, but that was the story I had in my hands. Oh, he, um, he was evil, but you could deny his fame. At that moment, I wanted to be a leader of some group or something. I had no ideology or belief system to promote. Paragraph 2. Now, the school administration put me in these remedial classes where the students were these social miscreants. There were the low IQ students and the troublemakers. A lot of them were members of street gangs. Some, sometime rival gang members would get into fights in the schoolyard or in the halls. They would write their gang name on the bathroom walls to promote themselves. A rival gang would cross out their rival's name and put their gang's name on it. I found this interesting. Most of the gangs in 68 were Chicano. A lot of them lived on the east side of town. I once had a conversation of a member of a gang who called themselves the Latin Playboys. And this member, he told me, Hey, you white boys are a bunch of pussies. Th there's no white gangs anywhere. I retorted, well, what about the Hells Angels? He laughed and said, no white... <laughs> Sorry, my mind got distracted. Let's do this again. Most of the gangs in 68 were Chicano. A lot of them lived on the east side of towns. I once had a conversation with a gang member of a gang called the Latin Playboys. He told me, you white guys are a bunch of pussies. There, there are no white gangs anywhere. I retorted, what about the Hells Angel? He laughed and said, bikers? They're always riding on the highway. They have no neighborhood to protect. We lowriders, that is what Chicano gangs call themselves, has got our barrios. Bikers are uh, just got the open road. I uh, as I added, isn't that what it's all about? Freedom? He laughed. Do you say freedom? What type of freedom comes f from or for what? Freedom from your responsibility to your country, your people? The only gang you whites have are the Marine Army, Air Force, and Navy. And I said, what about the surfers? They protect their surfs. They protect their turf from outsiders. He laughed even harder. Surfers? The beach? You know, I live 19 miles from the beach. And my homeboy's never been there. His name was Ice 
boy. He spent weekends in the RTD bus going to neighborhood to neighborhood to spray paint his name and gang affiliation on every wall available. I admired this. His pseudonym was known around the city. Illegal publicity. He was self-promoting his gang. They used to call this plaque. I heard somebody say, Yo, Ice Boy, I saw your plaque yesterday. I did too. I saw his name everywhere I went. Chicano's, Chicano gangs had their own calligraphy. It was based on old English fonts. Ice Boys taught me how to do this. Talk about a waste of knowledge. At that point, I wanted to start my own gang. I never been a good fist fighter. However, this part of the gang culture, you had to be tough. Never learned the many. I never learned the manly art of fisticuffs. I had one fair uh, friend, Jerry, try to teach me how to fight on the front lawn of s the school. He got frustrated at me. He yelled at me. This is the. F this is a fight to the death. Use your arms to block your blows. No. Now is not the time to scratch your ass. Come on, use your legs. Also, don't look away. Don't, never mind, Morris, you're just too uncoordinated. Do yourself a favor, a favor. avoid fights as much as possible. Well, this was 1968 and fighting was part of the school curriculum. This happened so fast, I was walking across the lunch court. Some clown stuffed an ice cream sandwich in my back pocket. I looked around to see who the culprit, who was the culprit. This blonde kid was laughing at me. I was pissed, lifted my fist up. We went around in a circle, and he bashed me on my nose. Bam! I saw a bright flash of light, then fell on the ground and blacked out. A few seconds, I came to, and I felt blood coming out of my nostrils. A bunch of pimple-faced kids were looking down at me. I stood up and went to the bathroom to wash up. I think that blow gave me a deviated septum, in which I had to surgically correct in 1975. What I should have done was gone to some clinic and had it bandaged up. When you get a fight, word gets around stuff like, uh, Hey Morris, I heard you got your ass kicked yesterday. <laughs> that, was, that was not the reputation I wanted. Last semester, I had bullies on my ass. Since I looked like a nerd, I got picked on. One kid used used to uh, put bubble gum in my hair during uh, music class. When I turn around, he say something to the effect, "What are you gonna do about it, Morris?" Then there was this kid, hazel-eyed kid, that stood in front of Chuck's liquor store on Third Street. He loved to torment me. He'll, me. he'll humiliate me. He would take my jacket, stomp on it, then slap my face. I didn't know who he was or what he had against me. For the first two years of John Burroughs Junior High, I had to look over my shoulder when I walked home. 68 was that type of year. I could have, I could have had the school protect me because that would make, but that would make you look like a snitch. My mom and dad were too busy to care. Later the, that year, things would change. And uh, that's the little sample I'm going to give you of this manuscript. Well, thanks for listening.